Reporting in progress. Good evening, my name is Alexander Haken. I'm the CEO of a tech company in Silicon Valley. Previously, I was a financial analyst and financial journalist and a research engineer in telecommunications. Tonight, I'd like to speak to you about Honduras very briefly. So uh, where is Honduras? They had an election. Uh, and in this election, the anti-big business candidate won. So I've color-coded this map to make it a bit easier for people to see what's going on. So Honduras is bordered largely by Guatemala and El Salvador, run by pro-business governments, um, essentially corporate um, control. Um, and then Costa Rica has uh, is sort of its own strange animal. It has no military. Uh, therefore, it isn't very threatening to its neighbors. And I haven't studied Panama lately. I haven't studied Jamaica lately. We can presume both of their governments are uh, big business friendly or corporate dominated governments. This is a huge benefit that Honduras has gone to the candidate opposed by uh, right. I don't want to alienate uh, people who are conservative. So I'm trying to avoid the words right and left. But business is actually switching towards this um, left party in Honduras. <clears throat> uh, so at any rate, Honduras is definitely not under the hold of the main pro big business party. Mexico and Lopez Obrador shouldn't really be considered under the hold of the pro big business party because it isn't. The both the democratic uh, because of the U.S. actions in Latin America over the last uh, uh, hundred years where we have overthrown every government in the hemisphere at least once. Um, it's really hard to move America to a anti-big business or uh, uh, you know, worker-oriented government. So we're certainly uh, the, the primary hegemon of the hemisphere and are therefore very uh, feared that we will interfere with countries that uh, uh, try to have more social programs, uh, do more for the, the poor and the working class and have less uh, of a iron uh, grip of business on the government. Uh, Canada also under Trudeau is a big business friendly um, uh, government. Cuba of course is not. So um, I have a few notes here. <clears throat> so first of all, the, uh, the person who won this election her name is Selmara Castro. And we can see a few pictures of her here. She's with the Party of Liberty and uh, Refoundation, Partido de Libertad y Fundación, uh, something like that. Um, and um, here she is with the head of uh, another party, uh, Mr. Nasrallah was sort of a middle of the road guy who should have won the last election but was cheated out of it. And the Trump administration carried water for an election fraud. Now, uh, I don't want to repeat abuse on Trump specifically because it was Obama who deposed her husband, Mel Zelaya, who started as a big uh, businessman himself, but gradually became more and more progressive and ultimately developed sympathies for the uh, Venezuelans. And that was his big mistake. So this, um, so Ms. Uh, uh, Shamara Castro has won by 54% to 33%, the largest margin, you know, 20 points in Honduras's history. She's the first female president. And very importantly, it looks like they're going to squeak out a one or two seat majority in Congress uh, in an alliance coalition. So here we have the estimates on the congressional breakdown. Um, and what we see here is that the Partido de Libertad y Fundación has 52 seats, 128 seats total. And this Partido of Party of Salvation or Party of the Savior of Honduras, which was started by Mr. Nasrallah, had 12 seats, at 64 seats. But there's some new work being done that indicates it's going to go to 65, which is just a one seat above majority. 
Uh, now, these are the, uh, the party that is utterly corrupt and na narco traffickers, which run the country, country now with, I believe, uh, something like Jose Ortega, um, o -H Hernandez um, is the current president. This is also going to create a switch uh, from uh, Honduras with very uh, much uh, extreme right uh, uh, Netanyahu supporters. Again, I'm trying to avoid the words right and left, but uh, sometimes they're hard to avoid. Uh, but they are extreme hardcore supporters of the most repressive policies of Israel on Palestine. Uh, and uh, uh, so Honduras is often is one of the only two or three countries that vote with Israel on matters relating to Palestine when their United Nations vote. So this is going to remove a, uh, a chess piece on the board for um, the uh, repression of Palestinians uh, for in Israel. Um, certainly Honduras will continue to have relations with Israel. Um, also, uh, Honduras under this J-O-H, as they call him, whose brother is a narco trafficker. Uh, and I just, you know, this party is utterly and totally corrupt. They voted uh, to make it more difficult to prosecute white collar crimes. Um, they have just voted for a series of, uh, of outrageous scandalous laws. Uh, and, um, and their party, uh, along with the, uh, the part, party, uh, the, the liberal party, which is another, I believe, pro-business party um, and anti-worker, anti-poverty, uh, eradication, uh, hostile to social redistribution. And these guys are actually going to end up with 63 or less. And there's another small party, the PDCH, that's going to get a seat. So uh, we're looking at uh, the Congress likely um, being able to pass legislation along with Ms. Shalmada Castro de Celaya. So, um, Let's see here. One of the big problems Honduras has is 48% of their tax revenue goes to a service of international interest on their debt because Honduras has no resources, which may be why there wasn't a bigger effort by our um, foreign uh, policy and intelligence communities to prevent a, uh, a swing towards uh, uh, party uh, control or, or, uh, or uh, elected officials that are not under the um, boot of big business. So it's going to be a big benefit, obviously. Um, and this party uh, is going to move recognition back to China from Taiwan over uh, what was originally the US attitude, which is a one China policy, which is one China, two systems. That was a condition to resume relations between the United States and uh, uh, China, People's Republic of China and um, Honduras had recognized Taiwan, uh, which is, um, uh, so that, that is also going to uh, reduce uh, pressure on China, that Honduras has moved out of the extreme Taiwan camp. It's also going to reduce pressure on Venezuela. So Venezuela has, of course, a, a, a party in power, uh, the Bolivarian uh, party, uh, which is, um, not controlled by big business, to put it mildly. And it's uh, the US is, doesn't even recognize the government, has it under sanction. Britain has stolen uh, or has expropriated billions of dollars of its gold reserves and essentially handed them over to an unelected person, Mr. Juan Guaido, that I'm sure you've all heard of. Uh, so I think that pretty much covers it. Uh, so this is a, a big relief to countries that are trying to develop independently from the United States uh, and, and to develop uh, programs that are not controlled by big business. Uh, what, what's going on in the rest of the hemisphere in uh, uh, Chile, there is a constitutional convention going on because the horrendous psychotic dictator, uh, Augusto Pinochet wrote, completely changed life in Chile, traumatized the population, uh, tortured and murdered thousands and thousands of people and created a iron uh, ring around this part of the hemisphere called Plan Condor. 
Uh, there's a great book called, um, I think I can, I'll bring it to you folks later. So this book is The Condor Years right here. Um, I highly recommend it. Um, you now getting back to uh, the point, um, they created an intelligence and military net, including Brazil, Bolivia, Paraguay, Argentina, Uruguay, and Chile. Um, and, um, uh, and so if you fled Chile because of political repression by this uh, horrendous fascist dictator, uh, you would simply fall into the clutches of the same people because he created an intelligence dragnet for this whole area. 500,000 people were imprisoned and tortured. 50,000 people were murdered, often by being slipped from throat to belly and chucked out of a helicopter or airplane into the ocean. And of course, the disappearances were terrible because most of the time people didn't know what happened to their loved ones. And the guy running in Chile right now, uh, so, so they're having a constitutional convention. There was an incredible transfer of power during the uprising in Chile. Um, and uh, and so uh, Chile is about to be able to write a new constitution and the pro-business, pro-Pinochet forces are a minority in this constitutional convention, which will bring uh, to the ballot a yes or no uh, uh, vote, plebiscite, on the new constitution, which will include health care, education. Chile has a very divided education system. Most upper middle class and rich people send their children to private schools, unlike in our country where many upper middle class people use the public schools because of property tax bases in their wealthy neighborhoods. Um, but in Chile, um, they, the uh, social safety net is, is, is very, very damaged and um, it will be uh, likely uh, codified into the constitution the right to education and, and healthcare, which we certainly do not have in our constitution. Although we do have um, provisions for the guarantees of education. Um, and uh, so I didn't throw Chile into, um, into uh, uh, anti or, or non, uh, not controlled by big business or controlled by big business. Uh, there's an election occurring on December 19th between a, 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 a man almost as evil as Pinochet whose name is Jose Antonio Cast, whose father was a real Nazi. He loves Pinochet and wants to pardon all the criminals that tortured people who are in prison in uh, Chile. And there's a great episode on that called The Fascism of Cast, K-A-S-T, which you should watch on YouTube. Uh, and you can enable subtitles. In Argentina, the, uh, the, the uh, forces that are most aligned with big business were thrown off. In Bolivia, there was a coup against uh, a uh, Indian, a Native American uh, president, uh, one of the few in the hemisphere that um, was truly supportive of the Native Americans, which are the majority of the population in Bolivia, Evo Morales. Uh, but uh, the coup was uh, reversed. Um, there was an election finally held, and MAS, the movement to advance socialism, uh, returned to power under his economics minister. And, and this man, Mr. Evo Morales, had dramatically transformed and lifted millions of people out of poverty in Bolivia. So having his economics minister, who doesn't, uh, is, looks less radical, but is very supportive of the indigenous population. Um, and then, of course, in Peru, there's a fellow named Pedro Castillo, who's recognized as one of us amongst the working class and poor, and he's under siege there. So it'll help him a lot uh, because the parliament there is still controlled uh, by the pro big business forces who are also racist towards the Native Americans in, in most people's view. Uh, so um, we had good news this weekend for people who want government, it's citizen run and not run by uh, corporations. Uh, it will provide a uh, uh, small uh, boosting of spirits in Peru. Peru is really uh, for, for Castillo to, to have some of the siege lifted. It'll be very important that in this uh, election, December 19th, that a uh, fellow named Gabriel Boric defeats uh, this odious 
uh, uh, son of a Nazi who they sent people to be executed at their farm. So it's a long story and I want to keep this short. So I hope this was useful to you. Uh, my name is Alexander Hagen. Good night and good luck.